Hey everybody, welcome to Tactical. This right here you might recognize as my TV PC. It is currently housed in a Silverstone SG-13. It's a fantastic case that I would highly recommend and it is probably the smallest widely available commercial case on the market. Today, however, I'm going to be taking all the components out of this and putting them in my brand new TV PC case. And that case is the... Laser 3D LZ7. It's a small, independently developed kind of like project case. The box is upside down, so fuck me. Anyhow, let's get it torn open, see what she looks like, and talk about what makes this case so goddamn special. So before we jump into the actual building, let me talk about why this case is so enticing to someone like me. I do budget-oriented hardware. If you're a regular of my channel, you know that. This is certainly not budget-oriented hardware. But my second love is ITX small form factor cases, and this is precisely why this case appealed to me. Now, what is it about this case over the competitors in this market space, like the N-Case M1, like the S4 Mini, Dr. Zaber's Sentry, or the Dan A4, that makes it so appealing to me? Well, all those other cases have have different form factor compromises that I'm kind of either not comfortable with or not really interested in. Now the end case is designed to fit full-size components with a few exceptions including you know fucking radiators and this is therefore capable of extreme overclocking in the smallest possible form factor you can possibly concoct. The S4 Mini is designed to not even have a power supply in it. It uses a power brick and a DC-DC power supply uh, with uh, normal size graphics cards and ITX boards. The Sentry is very similar but does have room for a small form factor power supply. And then there's the Dan A4 which is probably my second favorite small form factor ITX case in the world right now. Innovative design, but it still uses a lot of that space for a full-length graphics card Which I think could be cut down even further for someone willing to go like super fucking small and thus we get the Laser 3D LZ7. So all the LZ7 is trying to do is take the standard PC component layout, which is graphics card perpendicular to the motherboard, an ITX length card that's no longer than the length of the motherboard, a low profile cooler, I'll probably have to change this one because this is kind of big, and a small form factor SFX power supply on top. And it takes that boxy kind of shape and just tries to put a bunch of panels around it as small as you can possibly fit. Anyhow, I rambled enough, let's actually open this fucker up and see what she looks like. Okay, first let's start with the contents of the box. Just one thing of note, this case is almost entirely fully modular. There's all sorts of different side panels you can order when building your case on their website prior to your order. This is just a configuration that I chose. Your contents may differ slightly, but the whole point of this case is that it's kind of something that you build yourself. And speaking of the customizability, on his website you can see that you have plenty of options. You can change around the, the primary side panel colors, you can change the, uh, the, the, the front panel colors, Colors, the accent colors, the joints can be whatever the fuck color you want. You have all sorts of grill options here. They have circular fucking fan grills. You have stamped grills. You have empty uh, you have fan filter options. And he gives you estimates as to what the airflow and fan noise for the case fan and GPU vents will be based on your choices. So lots of customizability. The website is great. You can make this case any way you want to make it. And that's part of what makes this case fantastic. And now let's watch some footage of me haphazardly building this thing. Now, I can't blame any of that on the case because the case is actually really well put together, really well thought out for what it is. For an ITX case, uh, I don't think I've ever had a simpler and easier time. The delays I experienced were my own doing. I was having a lot of debates about whether or not I should include a fan that was kind of half busted and making a clicking noise or not. I ended up taking it out eventually. Did a lot of back and forth on where to place the fan grills and the filters in relation to the inside and outside of the case. Otherwise, incredibly easy to build in. And that is largely because you are concerned constructing the case as you assemble your system in it, which is unique. It, it, no other case in the world is really like that. I did not use a two and a half inch SSD in this uh, case, and it does have room for two. There's a, there's a slat that goes in the front behind the front panel that allows you to mount your drives, and that's what it's there for. I did not populate that because I wanted to cut down on all the cables in the system wherever the fuck possible. So my graphics card was a GTX 970, uh, which was convenient because it was a single 8-pin connector. So that's only one cable there that I'm routing. And the lack of SATA power and SATA made the cable management situation a lot easier. Of course, there's an M.2 drive in here, which is what I would highly recommend you do if you're going to build in this case, because it just saves you those two extra cables. And in a small space like this, space is like of primary importance. You want to make the most out of what you can with what you've got. The only bad thing about the build experience were the 
the eight screws that I used to put the fans and grills and filters on the side panels of the case. For some reason, they're made of what feels like 3D printed plastic instead of metal. All the other screws in the case are made of metal. Seems like a very minor cost item. And I guess he was just going for a very specific size or something like that or specific threading. Whatever the case is, because they were made of that plasticky shit, I did strip them a bit. They were still all functional, no problem there. They are a special screw uh, that he got made for the purposes of use in this case, and you can't buy a replacement at Home Depot. It might leave you up shit's creek if things go sour in the future. There are not a lot of like cable management tie-off sections and things like that, but really, if you've planned out your build properly and you've minimized on your cable usage as much as you possibly can, there really isn't a need. One regret that I do have is that they do offer a, a, a front I.O. that's just a power button with no USB ports, nothing like that. Considering this is going to be my TV PC, I might have wanted to opt for that instead. Pretty goddamn good for what it is. And here, ladies and gentlemen, is the finished product stacked on top of my SG-13. Obviously, as you can see, they are the same width, but when you turn them to the side, there's a pretty good idea right here of how much depth you're saving on this case. And it measures at about, oh, it looks like three and a half, maybe four inches almost, so pretty goddamn good. Now, if you're a regular on my channel, you know I don't do B-roll very well, but what I do do very well is uh, put my ugly face on the camera as close as I possibly fucking can next to the things I'm trying to demo to you, and that's what we're going to do right now. As you can see, my head is about the same size as this computer, about seven liters in total, only like much whiter and not nearly as good looking. In terms of functionality, the entire front side of the case is uh, uh, virtually unmarked outside of the vent that's here. And we'll talk more about those vents in a minute. Beautiful front finish. Uh, oh, the materials in general, the acrylic feels lovely. And the uh, the coating, the surface they put on this is just is just gorgeous. A little bit of bulging up top here, ever so slight, because I have a top loading power connector on my uh, graphics card here. So although the card technically does fit, the cable is a, like a little bit smooshed, just like a wee little bit. Now as for these vents, they run all the way around the case, not on the bottom though. Oh no, they do run on the bottom. I didn't realize that. Anyway, the vents of, uh, of note that are important are this one, this one, and this one up top that you see right here. Now what those vents are designed to do is provide a uh, air outlet for your open air single fan graphics card. So what it basically does is it pulls air in through the fan, which is uh, filtered now and has a nice grill over top of it to protect it. And then it expels air out the back and through all three of these vents. So there's no restriction or as little as you can possibly have with a closed case. Up top here, let's look at the top here. You guys can see we have another uh, grill here. This is for your power supply. Now I have a down mounted power supply right now because I'm trying to use that to help exhaust air out of the case. Uh, being that I have not yet installed the optional and uh, I'd say optional with quotation marks, 140 millimeter slim, 15 millimeter wide fan that goes on the other side over here. I haven't populated this yet. It's still wide open. The reason I haven't populated it, I have a fan on order that's going to be here Tuesday. I'm going to be installing. It also fits 120. It has mounting holes for both. You can even put a 140 millimeter filter and a 120 millimeter fan or vice versa if you want because they have two mounting holes and you can do one internally, one on the outside. And uh, this configuration I chose with the grill uh, makes that uh, possible and it's very flexible. Here we have power button, we have reset button, both nice clicky. I don't know if you can hear that, but they're very good uh, for 3D printed objects and very impressed. You already saw the underside of the case briefly. There's that other side of that vent and again some passive ventilation here. And this is the coolest part of all. Here we have the rear of the case. And uh, so there's your power supply mounting, nice and neat and orderly. Another passive vent here for in between the motherboard and the power supply. And uh, what's really cool about this case is that, I don't know if this is the case with all of them, but for mine, we have the Laser 3D logo in the back, which is nice. There's no branding on the front, which is fucking amazing. And my name, Ofa. He monogrammed it for me. It's great. Anyway, there you have it. There are my thoughts on the case. It's a fantastic product for what it is. Now comes the bad news. It's kind of expensive. It's 180 pounds, which is like 230 US dollars, which is like, oh, 300 plus Canadian. Like, it's definitely not a cheap piece of equipment. But here's the thing. It's an independently produced product, so it's going to be a little pricier than a normal case, that's for sure. It is highly customizable, a very high quality piece of hardware for sure. And it's good enough that it can be a forever case for you if that's what you plan on using it for. 
not the kind of thing you throw away build after build, obviously. This is something that you will be holding on to for a long period of time. I know the cost is a lot to justify, especially for my regular viewers who are all just like looking for cheap shit. So maybe it's not for them. But for people who have a very uh, niche specific purpose in mind for a computer like this, and they have a cubby hole or a slot somewhere in their TV cabinet or on their desk where something like that size has to go, it's the perfect solution. It's the only one of its kind. There's no other case in the world quite like this. And for the record, just before you ask, I did buy this case with my own money. He did not provide it as a review sample, although I probably could have asked and maybe gotten at least a discount. My channel's not like huge, but it's big enough to maybe negotiate a little bit. But I didn't do that. I was happy to pay for it with my own money and showcase it on my channel because I do believe in what a lot of these guys are doing and I want to see more of you out there do it. Anyway, when is it available? August 25th is what Kevin is telling me here in this message. Where is it available? Overclockers.co.uk. Uh, I'm assuming you can buy it on his website too, or something like that. And for people outside of the UK, that price includes VAT. So you won't be paying that if you don't live there. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Tune in next week for more shit, more related to the stuff I usually do, like digging through garbage, and I'll see you then.